This is a Gear Network production. Ladies and gentlemen, it's your boy, Mr. Perez. And you're listening to the Better Live Than Dead podcast brought to you exclusively on Gear Network. Listen in. How's it going, everybody? Welcome to episode number 67 of the Better Live. Episode 67. Oh, man, I'm going to have to give you the business on this one, Lewis. I was going to say, I was going to finish, I was going to say 67 of the Better Live Than Dead podcast and then stop and let you say it. But you know what? It's fine. It's already been said. It's already been done. The people know. They know now. It's episode 67 of the Better Live Than Dead podcast. I am Ryan Wolf at WolfBLCD on Twitter. On the other side of things, with a microphone for the second week in a row, ladies and gentlemen, we almost have a streak. Can't call it a streak yet, but we're trending in the right direction. We have Lewis at MRLG Perez, Mr. Perez, as you may know him, on a microphone, on a podcast. How you doing, man? I'm good, man. How you doing? I'm doing excellent. I'll tell you what, it's uh it's Wednesday. Yes, middle, it is. middle of the week. And uh this is kind of like uh it's hump day, as as a lot of people say, which is dumb as hell because Geico and Geico's stupid. But Oh dude, middle, I love that commercial. It's the middle of the week. And it feels to me like when we record the podcast, that's when I make the push over the top. Like, hey, it's time for it to be the other half of the week. So this is always fun. This is the the fun part of the second half of the week begins with the podcast. Excuse me. Yeah, that 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 camel made me chuckle. I thought it was funny like once, and then I kept seeing it, and I was like, "Man, this is some garbage. Cut this crap out." Yeah, it made, no, me, it, made me so damn mad. Once they started doing the t-shirts and stuff, I was like, "Okay, maybe you've taken it too far now." Well, now, you're beating, commercial dead, goes, now you're beating a dead camel, you know? Like they said, right, beating a but dead as far camel. as the commercial goes, oh, it makes me laugh every time I see it. So I wanted to, I, I kind of wanted to jump into a podcast today, but I really want to see how you're doing. Have a little bit of a pre-show. Take something from Get Ready America. First off, before we jump into anything, I want to mention, because I just got the, the email today, I downloaded it myself. Spreaker has a new Android app where you can favorite our podcast, and I believe you can get notifications when podcasts get posted. I haven't checked that far into it, but I would assume if it's a if it's a uh, an application, you can do such things as get notifications when your favorite podcasts are posted. You go in, you search "Better Live Than Dead" with the first one that pops up. You click on it, you click the star, and it will become a favorite podcast. Actually, while we're talking about it. I'm going to go look. I'm opening the podcast Spreaker now. I hit favorite. I click on the Better Live Than Dead. And uh, it's got all the info here. Hosted by Ryan Wolf and Mr. Perez. This weekly program talks sports in depth. With a little humor on the side as well. There's something for everybody in this podcast to listen in. That sounds like us. And if yes, you go to does. settings, if you go to settings, you can get notifications for new episodes available. So when this episode 67 goes up, I will get a notification on my Android phone saying episode 67 of the BLTD podcast is now live. Listen in. So that's pretty cool. Uh, that's pretty cool. I don't I don't have Android, but I think they're working on the I'm assuming they're if if the Android one is out, they're probably working on the Apple one now. Well, I don't, I don't carry I don't carry iOS. What? Oh my yeah, phone. you have a win- you have a Windows phone. I forgot. You're weird. My phones are Windows phones. Yeah, you're weird. You're one of them I Windows. For, I work for Microsoft, dude. What I, do know, you want? I know. I know. I <laughs> know. I think they might get mad at me if I carry something other than. Well, yeah, Microsoft. it's like with it's like with my job. I'm supposed to use my job's products, so it's like you know I, I understand. I, I'm supposed to use and promote my my company's products which which is fair i mean and I, I know with you i don't know do you get free phones or do you get like a mega discount on phones oh dude i don't i don't pay for anything bro there you go then not it's not only simple See, it makes that, sense yeah. but it's free too so you can't complain you have to realize like i i i'm essentially a corporate trainer i go into the different cell phone uh manufacturer well not manufacturers the, the different cell phone companies like at&t uh, T-Mobile, Verizon, and I train them on our products. Uh, right now, we're concentrating on AT&T because we have a new phone that's about to launch in, uh, next week called the 950. So whenever we have a new product like that that's about to launch, 
I always get the new product like a month beforehand in prototype form so I can play around with it and train people properly. So that's what I've been carrying around is the, the new 950. How is it? Awesome. But you would recommend it? It's, it's like, okay, so here's oh, the problem. What have I done? What have I done? What have I done? Nothing. nothing. Here's the problem with, before, before I, I talk about the, the positives of the device, I want to talk about the negatives of Windows phones. The main negative is the app store. Uh, the App Store isn't as large as Android or iOS, uh, and they're missing some key apps, and, and we need to correct that aspect of our business. Uh, because quite frankly, <clears throat> excuse me, if we corrected that aspect of our business, there is nothing on the market that can touch this device at this point. Uh, the camera is utterly ridiculous. Um, the next time we get up, I'll show you some of the features of the camera. It is just silly. Uh, and then included in this device, because we're really trying to make it geared towards everyone. <clears throat> but if you're a businessman or if you're a student, uh, this device, they're calling it essentially a PC in your pocket for a couple of reasons. Um, it's got something called Continuum on it. And basically what Continuum does is I can open up Microsoft Office and it's got full Office on it. So let's say I open up Word, okay? I can then take a Microsoft Doc. uh, I can connect the phone to the Doc. I can connect the Doc to, let's say, a, a bigger screen than the phone via HDMI. I could then start editing or creating the the Word document, I can move it to the bigger screen, okay? So everyone has screen sharing. Every manufacturer out there has screen sharing. We get that. But here's the difference. I switch Word over to the bigger screen, and I can connect a wireless keyboard and a wireless mouse. I can then start typing, creating the Word document on the bigger screen while still using my cell phone as a cell phone. That's awesome. Yeah, no other manufacturer is doing that right now. And I don't think they will be in the near future. Um, I can literally create, edit, PowerPoints, Excel spreadsheets, everything on the bigger screen while still taking phone calls, surfing the Internet on my phone, playing a game. And it's all being run literally from the phone. So I'm doing two very different tasks at the same time from the phone. Um, it's ridiculous. I'm trying right now, as as you're telling me about this Windows phone, I'm trying to get John of Get Ready America to join us for a, a few minutes at least. Uh, okay. He, he's currently recording his fantasy football podcast with Brandon right now. So cool. um, maybe... Maybe, just maybe, we'll have a special appearance in the podcast today. But cell phones are weird, man. Going back, yeah, but to you know, habit. like, like I, I love, I love having the technology in my in my hands. But sometimes it just seems like, like I, I've will be the first to admit, I have had a problem with social media, like being uh, attached way too much, and it's it's just because. It's always there. So if I get bored, I can check Twitter. If I get, you know, if I'm mad, I can go tweet. If I'm if I'm happy, I go tweet. If I am watching sports, I go tweet. It's like right. that's why my new job has been such a blessing for me because I've been able to. Um, and I don't want to sound like a like a Facebook weirdo by saying it's a blessing, but it's like a blessing in disguise because at my old job I would spend eight hours a day, forty hours a week staring at my computer screen while I did my job. Right, and right, right. That's just not healthy. And then I would spend the weekend doing the same thing. Where now I. I have a 30 minute lunch, two 15 minute breaks, and then when I get home from work, if I want to if I want to be on, I'm on. But like it's it's very refreshing to not be so attached all the time. And I'm still working on the weekends like in terms of getting off on the weekends, but you know, it's it's the people I follow are quality people, so it's always a lot right. of good stuff usually, but 
it's it's yeah, something see. it's something where I'm glad that I can I can start to ta- detach myself because, like I said, cell phones are great. It's nice to be you know stuck somewhere and hey, uh, I need to get I'm in a pinch. I got to get out of this pinch. You know, like for me, BLTD Sports. The website's broken. I got to fix it. I can fix it on my phone. But then right. again, like I said, I can spend seven seven or eight straight hours on my phone just tweeting about dumb stuff, and that's right, probably. Right, right. Yeah, I mean, I understand that because of the nature of my job. <clears throat> excuse me, I am connected all the time. <clears throat> I tend to. <clears throat> excuse me, man. Hold on, a second. I need to take some water. You're okay. I can talk. I, I have no problem talking. Go ahead. That's why I'm, that's why I'm here, man. It's the podcast. Oh. I don't want you to die. It sounds like you're dying or turning into a cyborg. So I'll give you a minute <clears throat> to drink your beverage. Well, that was weird. It's weird too uh, how you drank water and it just came your, your voice came right back like no problem. No, right? at all. <laughs> but uh, no, I mean I'm constantly connected simply because I have to show off the devices all the time. And for those of you who are confused who are listening about what Continuum is, uh, I encourage you go to YouTube, search Microsoft Continuum. It'll pull up a video. If you see a guy in a fedora, uh, you want to watch that, and then it'll explain. Microsoft Continuum, and quite frankly, watching it in the video is pretty awesome, but I was playing around with it last night, and its li- I was literally mind, like my mind was blown how seamless it was, how quick it was, uh, and, and I mean, it's its kind of ridiculous how a piece of technology, like if I'm a businessman and I'm carrying this phone, I could literally go someplace do a presentation to a, a group of individuals and and not worry about losing the functionality of my phone as a phone because most of the time when you do screen sharing, it's literally what your screen is is going to be what's shared. And with this one, my screen only pops up when I open whatever the app is that I'm going to move over to the bigger screen. And then it goes strictly to that. And then I'm looking at my home screen on my phone and no one else is seeing it. Now, I have a question for you. Go ahead. Since you're, since you're a Microsoft guy, is Cortana the FBI? <laughs> what? No. No, I, Cortana. I, I, the, the thing about it is um, Cortana is probably the FBI. <laughs> Why do you say that? I was in I was in my training class in school and my uh, my trainer was talking about it and he's like I'm pretty 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 confident that the that Cortana in Windows 10 is is the FBI uh, because it just the the way it collects information and how how applications and programs just will collect your information without you knowing these days. Um, he said yeah, but Siri does the same thing. We we all know what Apple we all know what Apple does with our information, so we're not we're not stupid. Okay, I mean, come on. If you don't think saying, Apple, like, if you don't think Apple gives the wrong people your information, <laughs> you must have been born at you must have been born at night and last night. Right, exactly. Yes. Well, you have you have a you have what you have a Samsung, right? Yeah. So you have you have Google now. And I never and use that's, it. That's their version. That's you know their version of their uh, personal assistance on a phone. It's it's similar. Uh, Cortana is scary in the fact that she learns what you search for. That's and... why he. That's why he mentioned that it, it might be someone powerful because it will sit there and it will, like you said, it'll search what you. It'll it'll pay attention to what you do and how you do it, and then like mold around you when you don't even use it. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of it's kind of scary in that aspect, but it's not the FBI. Okay, fair enough. Well, hey, I want to. Uh, I have a quick story for you. Funny story, because I've told the story like six times today, so I have to tell you because I think we'll get a kick out of it. Okay. Should, should I play my fake my fake bumper right now? Yeah, you might as well. Story time with Ryan Wolf, people. It's a story time with me. <laughs> so I'm at work today, okay? And I've been on the phone. Today was my third day on the phone. Uh, finally, I'm in nesting, is what they call it. So I'm, I'm getting ready to yep. to uh, to talk about, to talk and, and, and be like a legit floor person, I guess, is if you want to call it that. So I, I so, so I sit, okay. Just want to make sure. So I'm at, I'm at the phone today and I get a phone call from a lady, an older lady. Um, we'll say she's in her fifties. 
So the first thing she says to me, she, she's very frustrated when she gets on the phone. And I'm like, okay, you know, what's wrong? I'm trying to de-escalate the situation as my job is. And uh, she says to me, I just talked to you. You should know what's going on. And I was like, ma'am, I'm sorry. I don't understand what you're, what you're trying to say to me because I don't know who you are. I don't know what your problem is. Let me check your notes on your account after I got her phone number. She goes, you shouldn't have to check the notes. You just talked to me. You should know who I am. So I, I reassured her. I said, you know, I've never seen your name before. My, the notes say I was not the last one to talk to you. I was just on the phone with customer service 45 seconds ago, so I surely was not talking to you. And then she says to me, ah, whatever. All you white people sound the same anyways. <laughs> and she was a white person. <laughs> she was? How do you know that? Well, it's a funny story because my story continues. It's a great story. The whole thing about it is great. I know that she's a white lady because she says to me, I said, okay, ma'am, after I calmed her down a little and I sold her on some things so I could fix her computer, I sold her on premium tech support so I could fix her computer. Uh, I get in and I say, okay, ma'am, can you please replicate the problem that you're having? Because she said she was trying to send an email and uh, it was jumbling up her messages as she typed it. So she goes in her email and I don't see any problem. And then she clicks on an email and her that email takes her to a dating website. She goes on the dating website, starts typing a message in the dating website email and goes, this is my problem. And I saw her dating profile because she, she happened to click on it to show us all. And uh, she was a 50-some-year-old white woman. And I straight face was, you know, not I'm biting my tongue as I'm saying this because I'm trying not to laugh my ass off at her. I was right, just like, right, right. I was just like, ma'am, I'm sorry, but you have to understand we don't support dating websites. Like that is not your email. That is their right. problem. That is not my problem. And then I get her on the phone and I start fixing, I get her, I get further on in the phone call. I start fixing her problem and, and how it works is with log me in is I have to be on the call with her or I can't be on her computer. So I say, don't right. hang up. Put the phone down. Just keep me on speakerphone. I'll let you know if I need you. She hangs up on me. I try to call her back twice. No answer. I leave a voicemail and I hang up on her because that's kind of one of those things where I'm like, not my problem because pretty much. And I also had a lady today who was 91 years old and she couldn't figure out what a desktop was. So that was fun. Yes. Yes. That'll my happen. job is my job is very fun. I mean, I'm enjoying it a lot. I haven't gotten many difficult things to do, but, um, well, yeah. Well, like today we had we had two callers that were both over ninety years old. And those people are always fun. The one lady oh, had her mom yeah. call, who was probably in like her fifties or sixties. At least that was nice. But like it, it, it's every day's every day's a different experience, and I like it. That's what I like about the job. Right. So now you see so now like with with what you're doing. When I worked, like for instance, like when I worked at Verizon Wireless, the call center there, um, like I was there when the smartphone revolution really started to take off. So I've seen multiple different devices, um, different iterations of devices, and the phones nowadays are just, when I was started at Verizon in 2004, so we're talking just 11 years ago, <clears throat> the cell phones were nowhere near as advanced as they are now. Um, I had a lady call up one night, and she was mad, swearing cursing and telling us our service sucked and it was the worst and you know she went on for literally 10 minutes before i could say okay man what, what, i'm sorry you feel that way but what's the problem and she was saying to me every time i get a phone call i press the button and the call drops so i'm like well okay like i need to know what button you're pressing and, and she says the push while ringing button so i was like the push while ringing button oh there's no such thing as a push while ringing button so I looked at her phone in her in her uh, account, and I noticed that she had the same phone that I had, which was an LG 7000 at the time. Um, so I look at my phone, and I'm like, I wonder what button here could be considered a push while ringing button. And then it hit me, PWR, power. <laughs> So she was shutting her phone off. She was disconnecting the call every single time. So I told her, I said, man, I'm sorry, but that's the, uh, that's the power button. That doesn't stand for push while rain. You want to press the green button, not the red button. 
she hung up. <laughs> People are. I'm, I'm, I wonder if she hung up or if she accidentally hung up on you or purposely hung up on you. Oh, she she purposely hung up. Once she realized that she was, you know, being, being an made idiot fun with of. Cell phone. Yeah. 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 All right. Well, hey, let's talk some sports now. How does that sound? That was a good. Let's that was do a good it. Talk. That's a good talk. I want to start with some soccer. Because this pod, this podcast is going to kind of be an update to get everyone up to speed. Like, if you don't watch sports, I want you to be able to listen to the podcast and kind of be caught up with where everything is going. Um, so first off, Major League Soccer, the MLS, the the conference finals are set in the Eastern Conference. The Columbus Crew take on the New York Red Bulls this weekend, uh, and then the Western Conference finals, the Portland Timbers take on FC Dallas. Those are both game one, I believe. They play two games. Uh, and then it's two games aggregate. So the winner with the most goals goes on to the finals. So we'll keep an eye on that one for you. Moving over to the English Premier League, top four. You have Man- Manchester City, Man City with 26 points, Arsenal with 26. My dudes, Leicester City, the Foxes, 25 points in third place. That's absolutely astounding because last year You're they were. Well last year. They were well. They were in last place for a very long time. At Christmas, they were in last place, and they, I believe it was the they became the first team ever to pull out of dead last and not be relegated um, right. in the history of the English Premier League. Like that is, that's amazing. Uh, and then Manchester United, twenty four points is the top is is uh, fourth place rounds up the top four. Now the most surprising thing that has happened so far in the in the EPL is uh, Chelsea, the defending champions of the English Premier League. They're 16th with 11 points. They are closer to relegation, the relegation zone than they are the top four. That is absolutely baffling to me. It's early. It's only November. They play soccer for a lot longer. But if you fall into a hole early, it's usually very, 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 very difficult to climb out of said hole. Yeah, and the people who follow soccer... You're not used to hearing Chelsea being that low. In the being standings. bad, yeah. Chelsea being right. bad. It's just they've been terrible. Yeah, that, I, I've I've been watching some of the highlights and stuff. They have they have not been good. I wanna I wanna move over to the uh, to the NBA now. Memphis Grizzlies. Yeah. They acquire they acquired Mario Chalmers from the Miami Heat. A big move for the Grizzlies there. Um, now an interesting thing in basketball. I could have run up and down the standings, but. I, I formulated a question for you, Lewis. Okay. Golden State, 8 0. The Lakers, 1 6. Both are in action right now as we record the podcast as of 8 30, 9 30, I apologize, recording time on Wednesday, November 11th. They're both in action, so the records will, will change. Uh, but which is more surprising to you, the Lakers being 1 6 or the Golden State Warriors being undefeated in 8 0? Uh, I got to be honest with you. Neither one of them surprised me. Um, you know, it's a, it's early in the season. Uh, the Lakers are horrendous. Hold on one second. I apologize. We have some breaking news coming okay. across the wire. The Lakers have lost to the Orlando Magic, one hundred one to ninety nine. So that right. puts that puts them out. Did I not? Did I not pay attention? Am I not paying attention? I don't think I'm paying attention. Well, that puts them at one seven. Well, yeah, but I, I've, I, I put that down. But the the application I'm on is telling me they're still one and six. So as you were, they are one and seven right now. So they're tied for, with Sacramento for the bottom of the Pacific League. That is correct. Yeah, it, neither one of those stats surprised me. Golden State. Really didn't have to make many changes in the off season to stay an awesome team, um, and, and you know they played extremely well. Uh, I can see them. You know, I know it's early, early eight games in, but I could definitely see them making a run to another championship. And you know, Steph Curry's been playing out of his mind. And uh, the Lakers, they have a bunch of young cats, and they got Kobe Bryant. And Kobe Bryant has been absolutely horrendous this year. Well, as for Kobe Bryant, I did write down the stats for it because I did want to mention them. Uh, He's at 16.5 points per game. He's shooting 32% field goals and then 20.8% from the three-point line. 
uh, both under his career averages. Right. So he he's and, and right now he's fighting bad back. Uh, he's he's so he didn't play last night because he's got a sore back. He, and he didn't play tonight either because of a sore back. It's too early in the season to be having those type of issues. Uh, you have and, to remember you know, too. He's like what is he like forty? Yeah, thirty eight, thirty nine, something like that. Uh, but it's it's just you know it's kind of sad to watch knowing what Kobe Bryant was and seeing this iteration of Kobe Bryant is is not fun. It, it may be time for him to hang it up. He probably won't till after the season, but I think it's definitely time for him to ride off into the sunset. I, I think this year absolutely is his last year. By the way, I did the math just to double check to make sure we aren't giving out false information. The Lakers are now one in seven. Um, and Golden State, as of my application, my app, the score. I'm using the, I'm using the score app right now. Uh, as of right now, let me click on the game score. Where is it? It is right here. As of 845. 8.46 left in the third. 52 to 45, as you mentioned, Lewis. Golden State over Memphis. And uh, Steph Curry has 12 points, three assists, and four rebounds. And for Memphis, Mario Chalmers is not playing tonight, which makes nope. sense. They also acquired James Ennis in the deal, I do believe. Now, it's a little early to speculate, but we're going to speculate anyways because we love doing this stuff. Is there any way you see the Lakers trading Kobe Bryant to a contender, or do you think they'll ride and ride or die? Probably ride and die, but ride or die with with Kobe Bryant this season. I think he's going to be the ride or die with them. I don't, I don't really see them trading trading him to someone just to you know because because the fact of the matter is it's still Kobe Bryant. So if you're going to make a trade. You're going to want something serious, and I don't really see a team giving up anything really good uh, to get. Kobe well, then Bryant again, this point. if 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 it comes unless down it's like to a it, draft pick. Well, unless it comes down to it, and, and a team says, you know, there's a contender out there, and, and Lakers say, you know, we'll take a second round pick for Kobe. It might right. just be a dump, but you get him like another rig. It it may be a deal where Kobe says, I want to go here because of this or because of that, and he may not be a starter. Or he might be a starter, but he may not play important a very right. important role. Uh, I mean, because wherever Kobe goes, he's probably starting, but he won't, you know, he right. won't be playing 40 minutes a night. That's for sure. And I uh, can't, I can't, I don't know. I no idea like where he would go right now. Maybe something opens up as the season goes on, but like I said, it's a little early to speculate, but. Well, I can't see him going to Oklahoma City. You know, I definitely can't see him going to Cleveland. And Cleveland's 7-1 right now. Um, yeah, Cleveland's very, Cleveland's been good, uh, as expected. Yeah. Uh I'm interested to see. I'm interested to see how the season. And again, I know we're we're just baseless speculation right now. But I'm interested to see how the season goes in Oklahoma City with Kevin Durant, with him being a free agent in the off season. Uh, we don't know Kobe. It'll be interesting to see how that wins. Well, yeah, we know we know Kobe wants to win. But I'm just saying, I'm just throwing stuff out there right now. Like you know, if Durant, I want to see how Durant works out in Oklahoma City because you know, we saw the the controversy this week in Washington when he went home to play the the. The Wizards, and he got booed in Washington um, because he made some comments about the fans wanting him to leave for right. the for for the Wizards right now. And he's like, you know, it's too early to talk about that. Blah blah blah. And he got booed. So we'll, we'll see how that one works out. I'm always I, I'm always wrapped up a lot in the free agency side of things. So he would I'm interested make, to see how that. He would definitely make uh, that the Washington Wizards team better. They oh him him and John Wall would be difficult. Yeah, they're they're not bad now. They've done a lot of really good things in that squad. They got a nice young core that are going to only get better. Um, yeah. So I, I can see, you know, if he goes there, he's going to make them a lot better. Oh, absolutely. Now that's better basketball talk. First time of the season we talk basketball. We're going to talk more basketball. Don't worry. As I always say, we'll get there. We've got time. Maybe the we'll get some basketball is, people on. Think about this. What's the, the question is? What would be more exciting to see, him still with Russell Westbrook or him with John Wall? I'd like to see him with John Wall, and I want to see what Russell Westbrook can do. I mean, we've seen what Russell Westbrook can do when leading a team, uh, but you know, I, I still, I'm still bummed that we never got to see Oklahoma City win a title with the big three of Westbrook, Durant, and Harden, because that was Dude, fun. That would have been awesome. If Harden had not left, they probably would have already won a title. couple, most likely. 
Yeah, they were devastating I, together. Yeah, they were. In the National Hockey League, just a few uh, a few teams to, to graze over really quick to bring you all up to speed. Montreal currently in action. They lead. Uh, let's see here. They lead the Pittsburgh Penguins three two with seventeen fifty left in the third period. They currently lead. Not only the Eastern Conference, but the entire National Hockey League with a 13-2-1 record, 27 points. The New York Rangers are second in the East with an 11-2-2 record, 24 points. In the Western Conference, the hot, hot Dallas Stars, 12-4-0, 24 points. And second, St. Louis is 11-3-1 with 23 points. Um, in the Eastern Conference, not so surprising. In the Western Conference, a little surprising with, with Dallas and St. Louis being so hot out of the gate. But you know what? As I say, that's why you play the stick puck, man. I made that saying up because I love saying stick puck. But give me some credit here. Come on. Talking about the Buffalo Sabres. <laughs> don't mind me. I'm a little weird, Lewis. You should know this. It's been 67 episodes. I don't know why you're laughing at me. It's not good, man. You know me by now. You know now. what? The crazy part about the, uh, you know, like if – I'm sorry, go ahead. Talk about the Buffalo Sabres because we're talking about the Atlantic Division. And I was going to say the crazy part about the Atlantic Division is how hot Montreal is at 13 to 2. And Montreal no started really, off so well. Yeah, and no one's even really close to them. I mean, the thing about Montreal is everyone expects them to be very good with Carey Price, with PK Subban, Max Pacioretty, uh, guys like that. But they always, they, they can never put it together when it's important. And whether right. it be. Uh, Michelle, Michelle Terrian, I can't ever pronounce his name. Michael Terrian, Michelle Terrian, I don't know. Sorry. Not good, ho- not good hockey coach. That's what I'm going to call him because I, I don't know. I, I'm of the narrative that Michelle Terrian is just not a. He's an okay coach. He's a good coach, but he's not going to be the one that wins you the Stanley Cup. I mean, he was right. he was the coach in Pittsburgh when they fired him, and then Dan Bylsma came in and won the cup that year. Um, he's been good in Montreal, but not good enough. Uh, so we'll see what happens there, but. Montreal is. I just, hands, I, that, I, I just think it's nuts that fifteen games in, and they're already ten points up on the nearest competitor. I mean, they're they're they'll struggle at, at some point in time. I mean, right now Carey Price is out with it with a lower body injury. I believe it is. He'll be back in a, in a little while, but at some point in time they'll come back to earth. Um, I actually want to see something right now. I'll, I'll tell you because now that you're saying that they'll come back to earth, you just sparked an idea in my head. And I'll explain it to you in a second. Uh, da, 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 da. There's a thing in hockey called PDO. Yep. And essentially it breaks down to puck luck. I think I've explained this on the podcast before. If not, I wrote it in an article. Um, as of tonight, the Montreal Canadiens, uh, their PDO is 1.58. Now, why is that important? Because they say about a 1.0 is... Uh, is average is is normal for a team for for any franchise. So if you're above 100, you'll you'll regress down to 100. If you're below 100, you'll probably move up to 100 at some point in time. Like uh, at one point in time, let me get the Google Chrome popped back up. At at one point, the Arizona Coyotes were at 112 PDO. Now they're at 1.007, which is about normal. Roughly about normal. So but as mentioned, they're, they're eight and six right now. Yeah, as mentioned, Montreal one point oh five. They'll probably regress back to the mean. I mean, they can they can. Well, oh, that's guess freaky, man. Right now, sorry, breaking news in my basement. There is an there is a spider that crawled up from the floor, and I'm currently watching him work his way up a spider web line that. He's gone from the floor to the ceiling, and this is actually like some impressive stuff going on right now. I've never actually watched a spider do this. Do you need to take a couple of seconds to go kill it? I'm not gonna kill him. He's got he's got his own thing going on, man. <laughs> now you're a nice guy. I don't, got no, I don't got no problems with him. He didn't do anything wrong. I'm just trying to say. I just watched him climb up, and I'm like, holy hell, that's pretty cool. But you want to talk about puck luck? The Buffalo Sabers puck luck is currently .973. It's gotten a little better, but they're still 27th in the league. Oh, they've won that, two in a row. That brings me to the Sabres talk now. They're 7-8-0, 14 points, 12th in the conference. They're playing a lot better than most people expected them to. They're getting on a bit of a hot streak right now. They just defeated the Tampa Bay Lightning for the first time all season. They only play four times. They've already played all four games. Um, 
In 15 games, they played Tampa four times. How's that for scheduling? Not very good, but the Sabres got it together and figured it out. Finally, I mean, they broke. They also broke a seven-game losing streak against Tampa, dating back to last season. So it's 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 been a tough go against Tampa, but the Sabres, like I said, they they, they figured it out. They got it together. Uh, goaltending has been a little better. It was suspect when Chad Johnson was starting all the time. Uh, Lena Solmark it seems to be uh, the man with the plan in net. The Buffalo Sabres look like they're very comfortable letting him get a bulk of the starts until Robin Leonard comes back. I'm assuming uh, Thursday night when the Buffalo Sabres play the Florida Panthers that Olmark will be back in net um, and, and let Chad Johnson get back into more of a backup role uh, because you know when he plays a lot, he's not very effective, and we saw that because, again, he's not a great goaltender, but he's a decent backup. And when you put a decent backup and make him to a, an average goaltender, um, I mean, and not to mention when Chad Johnson was in net, he was playing well above it, a below average. I mean, his his goals allowed per game were almost three. His save percentage was, I think, uh, 0.88 something, almost 0.89, which is horrible. Um, but in terms of the, of the Sabres lines, they still been kind of a jumbled mess trying to figure out who's going to go where uh, with Evander Kane still being out. Uh, on the defensive side of things, it's still shaking out with Zach Bogosian not coming back anytime soon still. Um, a lot of rumors going around that he has a groin injury, which as we know in sports, and especially in hockey when you have to you need that burst, uh, if you have a wonky groin, it's probably not good for, it's not good for business. It's not even probably not. It's very bad for business. And uh, you have to be very careful with how you rest and rehab that groin injury because if you don't do it right and you come back too quick, you could set yourself back even further. Um, but the Sabres, there's no doubt they need Zach Bogosian on, on the defensive side of things uh, because Mike Weber has not been very good. Uh, I mean, Cody Franzen, scored his, Cody Franzen scored his first goal of the season on Tuesday against Tampa, a beautiful goal. Looked like it was going to bounce off the post and go left. It bounced off the post and went right and then hit the other post, and it was a goal. Uh, went left, right, and in. Or went left, in, and then hit the right post. I'm sorry. Um but he'll, Cody Franzen will be a guy who will benefit from the return of Bogosian because his his five on five time will get cut, which will allow him to be a more effective player on the power play, which he's great in the power play. But when he's playing fifteen, sixteen, seventeen minutes a night, his effectiveness on the power play kind of dwindles. It's like he, he becomes a little more dull because he's playing so much. Um, but as as for the offensive lines, I mean Marcus Foligno has been playing a lot better in these in this. Small sample size of games. I've uh, been very impressed with with Nick Delorier. Obviously, Ryan O'Reilly, uh, Tyler Ennis, um, uh, Jack Eichel. I mean, the one guy that's that's kind of stuck out to me, Zemgis Gergensen's. Uh, I'm not too sure what's happening with him, if he's struggling to fit into a role or he's just not hitting a stride. But at some point in time, you're going to figure that Gergensen's will hit it because he's he's a talented hockey player. I mean, he, he scored... Um, Almost, I, I think I can't. Remember, I think it was 15 or 16 goals last season. Let me double check that because I can't even remember. But last year was kind of a coming out party for him in the National Hockey League. He really, uh, he really showed that. I mean, we all know how bad the Sabres were last year and the year before, but he really showed that. Uh, yeah, they were not good. Yeah, he can he can stick in this league and he can score <clears throat> some goals, but at some point in time, you have to wonder this season. I mean, again. You know, he's only 21 years old, so you can't expect too much. But right. it feels like he's been around for a very long time. And to be completely serious, I mean, he's 146 career games. You know, he had 24 goals, has 24 goals in his in his career, 54 points. I'm just trying to figure out how many goals he scored last year. Well, you know, as, as, as you if, know my wonderful, uh, if my wonderful girlfriend is listening to this podcast, she's probably <laughs> yelling at me right now as she hears the podcast because she knows how many goals he scored last year. I just can't remember. <laughs> So I'm I'm trying to find a website that will allow me to do it. I think I have it. Yes. I'm just gonna I like I like to talk my way through things. That's what I'm doing right now. Last season he scored 15 goals, 15 assists, 30 points. The year before that he scored eight goals and and 14 assists in in 70 games. I would say I mean he's got three points this year, two goals and an assist. I would say at some point in time you would expect him to probably um he, he would he would probably get maybe 10 goals, and that would be a, a good marker for him with the Buffalo Sabres this season. Um, I don't know why that said two goals and an assist. He has one goal and two assists 
Either way, hockey reference is wrong. NHL is right. I figured that was wrong. So he has two points this season. Anyways, uh, I kind of went off on a tangent there about the Buffalo Sabres, but I love the Sabres a lot. I like to talk about them, as you well, may I know. I know. As you may know on BLTD, BLTDsports.com, don't mind the cheap plug, but uh, we love hockey here. I was going to say, like, I, I, you know, I'm not a, a Buffalo Sabres fan. I'm a Pittsburgh Penguins fan. Yeah. And, and they're 9-5 to on the season. Um, but it, it, where we are, it's always nice to see when when Buffalo's doing at least semi-decent because then people are a little more happy in this area. You're a little more happy. Uh, you know, I'm always, I'm always 10, happy. Right. I mean, their last 10 games, they've been 6-4, of four, so it's nice to see them above – uh, 500 or the last 10 games. Uh, they've won two in a row, so that's nice. You know, and I feel like Pittsburgh the, in the Metropolitan, they're fourth in the Metropolitan, but in the last 10 games, they've been eight and two. Um, so they're definitely, they started out the season kind of rough. Um, and they're definitely starting, I think, to find themselves a little bit in this season. So going eight and four in the last 10 is, is, is really good. Um, and it's, it's, Actually, you know, in the last 10 games, it's, it's tied for the hottest streak in, in the league with New York Rangers, who have won eight, but they've tied two. Um, so that's that's nice to see. And actually, it's kind of nice to see the New York Rangers up there, too, with 11 and two. Uh, whatever New York is doing well, you know, it's, it's nice to see. I, uh, uh... I, I, I'm interested. I'm interested to see what the what the Rangers can do because they're such a talented team, and they have right. as good of a shot as anybody else to to represent the Eastern Conference in the Stanley Cup Finals. But you just you just wonder when they're going to put it all together and, and and possibly win the cup. I mean, they've had a couple chances to 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 make a good run, but they just can't put it together. Okay. And I mean, they have one of they have one of the they have one of the best goaltenders in the game in Henrik Lundqvist. I mean, it's just if it's if it's just not timely, if it's not timely offense, if it's not, I don't know, if it's not timely offense, if it's not you know uh, good defense, you know, if if Lundqvist is in a in a bit of a slump, it just always seems to happen at the wrong time. Right. No, I agree. And actually, I'm going to. I, I want to transfer now to um, to Major League Baseball because I'm going to get John on the podcast. But I want to hold on. How'd you like that? Me spitting out hockey facts. What's up, yo, man? Is if if you can if you can do that, I think we'll have a good good winter for sure. <laughs> I'm just trying to get John on the podcast. We're gonna try to. Um, Trying to make this thing happen. We're, we're we're expanding our horizons, and if John jumps on with a microphone, um, we can pretend like it's a radio show, you know. There you go. Call in number seven. You're live on the air. Like that, you know. There you go. By the way, you know what's really cool? What's up? Episode 69 is coming up soon. <laughs> That's Yo, my dude, favorite. That, that... Yo, dude, that, that spider's going up again. Is it? Oh man, it's awesome! This is so much fun to watch, man. Like spiders don't freak me out as long as they're not on me, you know. I got here. I wonder if they're making like a spider home, you know? Like chill, dude. I don't care. You do what you want. Just don't make a spider rub in my face or anything. Nah, man. It's you know they start hat. They start you know. Making things for their eggs and stuff. Also, you're gonna have a bunch of little yeah. baby spiders. Right around. Ah, don't don't even start. I'm gonna smack you in the face. Don't even start with that shit. Well, don't even, even do cool. that. You're freaking me out. Uh, uh, uh. Okay, let's talk. Let's talk some baseball before John gets on. Um, St. Louis Cardinal pitcher Lance Lynn out for next season with Tommy John after having Tommy John surgery. I don't know if he's had it yet or if he will have it, but he's out next season. A big blow to the to the Cardinals rotation, and I'm assuming it's it's going to affect their decision in the offseason on whether to re-sign a guy like John Lackey or go out and sign another pitcher. Um, Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim first baseman and designated hitter Albert Pujols undergoes foot surgery. They're saying opening day is in doubt for him. Not good news for a guy who's had consistent foot problems. So we'll see how that one works out for him. But again, uh, it's Albert Pujols. I'm not overly worried about it, but 
I'm keeping an eye on it for sure. If I was in fantasy baseball, I probably wouldn't draft him. But I don't play fantasy baseball because if you can tell, I'm not very good at fantasy sports. <laughs> uh, Colorado Rocky shortstop. Jose Reyes was arrested on suspicion of uh, domestic violence. Sorry, information here. John is not getting my John is not getting my email invite and I'm very angry about that. Because you got it. It just came through as an Uber conference email, correct? Yes, sir. All right, then I don't know why he's not getting it. We'll see though. Um, I'm trying to rush through this because there's a topic coming up in baseball that I want to get John's thoughts and your thoughts on at the same time. So we'll talk about that in just a second. I'll, I'll waste some time here. Ah, oh, damn, I knew it. I sent the wrong email. There you go. I, I don't know why I did that. I always get that mixed up, though, because I always think he's the JC Money at Gmail. He probably should make an email like that, you know? <laughs> so I can send all my random emails to him. There you go. I'll just send random emails to John. I don't care. Um, last thing before we move on. Well, we got two more things, actually. Byung-ho Park, the Korean baseball organization... Home run hitting sensation. He hit 53 home runs last year in the KBO. The Twins win his negotiating rights. I think it was around $12.85 million. Um, If they sign him, he'll likely end up in Minnesota. That seems like a pretty big deal for the Twins, who will get a very, very good hitting first base. But now, you know, coming over from the KBO to the MLB, um, it's a a, a much different ballgame for sure. But it's good to see the Twins trying to make an impact and trying to get better. And trying to um, and, and trying to improve their their chances in the AL Central. I mean, we saw how good of a team they had this year. You know, if they had a, a decent first baseman or a decent power hitter in the lineup, they may have been able to push themselves into the wild card game, into the playoffs. So we'll keep an eye on that one because, especially if it's a minor league deal, he'll end up in Rochester, and then we get to watch him. And I'm not mad about that at all. No, that'd be awesome. So John tells me he needs five minutes. So we're going to jump into this topic, and then we'll get his thoughts when he jumps in, and we'll talk football with him, which makes sense because we've not yet talked football about with him this season, I don't think so. Okay. Um, the Hall of Fame announced not only announces the 2016 class, like the new names that are entering the ballot this season, which we'll get to in a moment, but as we talked about last year, Lewis, or earlier this year, I think it was, um, they, they weeded out the, the voting a little like if you haven't if you haven't voted an x amount if you haven't worked for an organization or a a newspaper or whatever in x amount of years you're off the ballot so the ballot's been trimmed from 600 to 450 and there's a lot of younger younger writers now so there there have been some some speculation that we're going to see a lot of relievers a lot of dhs because at some point in time you have to start voting in relievers you have to start voting in designated hitters like Edgar Martinez and when David Ortiz comes up or uh this year we'll, we'll mention a couple of reliever names that that will be very interesting to keep an eye on but um first off Ken Griffey Jr. an absolute lock he won't get 100% of the vote because no one ever does someone out there is a dickhead and wants someone to interview <laughs> them and ask them why no it's I'm being serious because People who don't vote for Ken Griffey Jr. will end up on ESPN. They'll end up on talk radio. They'll end up on Fox Sports 1, and someone will ask them, why don't you think Ken Griffey Jr. was a first ballot Hall of Famer? And then they can beat their narrative into the ground. That's why that happens. There have, there's never been, except for, aside for, let me, let me get this correct, aside for the inaugural class in the Baseball Hall of Fame back in the 40s, I believe it was, like 1941 or something like that, um... Actually, I don't think that's right. It's like 1961. I don't know why I said 41. I'm going to check that out now because I'm totally wrong. Um, There has never been a class, anybody that's been unanimous into the Hall of Fame, except for the first baseball Hall of Fame class, which I know had some brilliant, brilliant, brilliant baseball people in it. I'm going to grab it right here. 1936, it says... That doesn't seem right, but we'll see. Wow. Well, I mean, you know, like we're talking right, about... Okay, so yeah, yeah, it was right. It was right. Yeah, it was 1936. 
and they were unanimous. Oh, they weren't. They weren't unanimous. I thought they were unanimous. I thought that's how that worked. What booty holes, man? Am I just like? Am I just dumb, or just playing stupid tonight? Um. What is going on with my brain cells? I don't know what, man. I don't know what's going on with my brain cells today, you know? Anyways, the first, the first Hall of Fame class was Ty Cobb, Babe Ruth, Honus Wagner, Christy Mathewson, and Walter Johnson. 98.2% of people thought Ty Cobb was a Hall of Famer. I don't know how that extra 8 to 1.8% didn't think he was a Hall of Famer, but uh, that's cute, I guess. No idea. But anyways, so I'm, I'm wrong. I'm, I'm a man enough to admit it. I'm wrong. And uh, joining us now on the line, let me, I don't know why your microphone is off. Okay. <laughs> joining us now on the line, on the microphone line. You hear me? I hear you. He is the voice, one half of the voice. Because I can't hear you at all. You can't hear me at all? Uh-oh. Let me try, got, hold on. Let me try putting some headphones up in here. Oh, you, better put some, you better put some headphones on because... We're talking to you. You're talking on our podcast. You're ruining things. You're making things bad for us. You can't hear what I'm saying right now. You can't hear what I'm saying. I'm talking some junk, so you'll hear this junk when you listen back to the podcast. No. Uh, can you hear us? Yeah, it's not, it's not working. Not working for me. All right. All right. This is garbage. This is, I'm, I'm mad at you, John. You're going to have to call on the cell phone. You can't even hear me. I don't know why I'm talking to you. Uh, I'm gonna have to text. I'm gonna have to text him. You want me to text him the uh, the call in or the the pin? I'm mad because it sounded great. I'll I, I'll just shoot him. I'll just shoot it over right now. Seven one six. This is what happens when we try to podcast. We try to do things. We try to do nice things for you listeners, and we always break it. Always <laughs> mess it up. Always. Never. Never. Never, ever, never ever, dull ever, ever fails. Never dull moment. It's always, as I've said multiple times, Lewis, it's never a BLTD podcast without a technical difficulty. That's right. And boy, is this a technical difficulty. Anyways, back to baseball. Ooh. Oh, do we have John? We have John back. John, hi, John. Hi, John. Can you hear me, John? All right, this is pissing me off. I heard, <laughs> I heard the phone ring, and then you guys went mute. So... Uh- Maybe it's, maybe it's maybe it's you, it John. old school Mr. Perez style, on the phone. So I love it. I love it how he just. Uh, I yeah. love it how John just shows up on our podcast, Lewis, and then just like takes it over. He's like, I know you guys can't hear me, but I'm just going to take it over. That's all right. Like, what if we were in the middle of a conversation? He just shows up and he's like, I'm just going to. The damn talking. thing won't let me leave. Look at that. What is he doing? <laughs> Complaining about technology. He's taking a damn podcast hostage. Uh, Ken Griffey Jr. on the ballot for the first time. No doubt he goes in. Uh, Mike Absolutely. Piazza, Mike Piazza, 69.9%. Uh, there's no doubt I think he goes in this year too. And, and the thing is, by the way, people, I understand we've talked about this ad nauseum throughout the year multiple times. We're going to talk about it again multiple times, uh, probably again when the season rolls around, probably again when we get closer to the voting uh, because – we want our voices to be heard, and that's why we have a podcast. That's why we're here in a podcast land. But I think Piazza gets in. Jeff Bagwell maybe gets enough votes to get in this time. Same with Tim Raines. Jeff Bagwell had 55.7 last time around. Tim Raines had 55 flat last time around. But Tim Raines is in the second to last year of eligibility, so that'll be interesting to see what happens there. The two names I am interested in in terms of when I said a reliever Hall of Fame. I I can't remember who put out the article this week, but uh, oh, son of a. Oh hey. Oh hi. Hey, hey, I can actually hear you guys. It was nice of you. It was nice of you to show up. First off, everybody on the line now. One half of uh, Get Ready America, John Semino. Say hello to the people, John. Hello to the people, John. You've already said hi a couple times because I was joking around with Lewis. You'll hear this when you listen back to the podcast. Uh, we had you jump in, and it was funny because you couldn't hear us, but you took over the podcast. I did? You took over the podcast. Oh, oh that's awesome. It's like you Great. had perfect I'm, I'm you having had, to make You indirectly had perfect timing. Did I? Well, you know what? They have these little icons here where I can see where you're talking, and I can see where Lou is talking. Like, now I can't because I'm, I'm using... Uh, I'm actually using the phone, and how, how, did, how, how do I sound? I'm actually using voice over IP phone through Gmail 
you sound good through my mic so hopefully hopefully it sounds a little better than an actual phone call would it but, sounds it sounds a lot um, better than an actual phone call for sure okay okay good good i'll I'll definitely listen to it because I listen every week. I would hope you listen. I do. We've got to get our we've got to get our listen our our one listener somehow. <laughs> <laughs> well, if if it's just one if it's just one listen, it's probably just Lewis. Hey now, I listen twice. Hey. hey oh, okay, okay. Yes, yes. The infamous number twice, Lewis. That's an old school <laughs> joke with us. <laughs> I, I'm, 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 I don't know if you remember. You remember that? Oh, of course I remember that. I still say it. Some, I still say it sometimes. <laughs> All right. Hey, real, real quick. Since I took over the podcast sure. once before, and I'm going to do this again. Have you guys heard the Seattle Seahawks song? No, I have not. From um, no, not. From God's what's Mac his one? face from uh, Godsmack? God's yes. Well, you know what? For your listening pleasure. For your listening pleasure. Uh, and I recorded this for uh, my podcast with Brandon Football Talk Weekly. Uh, we I managed to throw this on here, so um, have a listen. It's so great. I don't, I don't know if that came through. Did that come through? Yeah, I'm, I'm going to have to go listen to that yeah, now. I'm going to have to go listen to that now. Oh, it's, it, dude, it is, seriously, and Lou, if you can find it too, it is the funniest freaking thing. It's uh, the, the lead singer of, of, of Godsmack is a Patriots fan, and he was performing in Seattle, and Seattle, uh, the, the crowd started chanting, let's go Seahawks and Seattle Seahawks or whatever. So he starts ripping on them for being Seahawks fans and then just breaks into this random song. And it's hysterical, so I had to I had to chop it up and play it. So do you have, do you have headphones in? I I do have headphones in. Okay, because I was I started to echo there and I wasn't sure why. Um, mm-hmm. Question for you, question for you, John. Okay. Uh, Ken Griffey Jr., Mike Piazza, Jeff Bagwell, Tim Raines on the on the Hall of Fame ballot next year. Griffey for the first time. Uh, also, Billy Wagner, Trevor Hoffman, the point I was making before you joined on was I can't remember who, who did the article. I'll go look it up while you're talking. But um, at some point in time, now with the new new class of, of Hall of Fame voters, it's it's down to 450 from 600. A lot of new faces, I guess, from, from what I'm gathering. But uh, at some point in time, we need to start seeing relievers and designated hitters go into the Hall of Fame. Do you, in, do you think this is a year where we see a Trevor Hoffman, a Billy Wagner, go into the Hall of Fame, or are we still a couple years away? And take a shot in the dark, both Lewis and John. Give me a number. How much percentage of the vote does Ken Griffey Jr. get when he gets elected to the Hall of Fame next season? Well, I would say Ken Griffey Jr. should get 100% of the vote uh, without question. There's no, no one's ever done it before, John. Not. Don't forget that. No, no one's ever done it before, right, but there's no reason he should not get a, a, a a hundred a unanimous vote for the hall of fame. I mean, you look at this numbers that this guy uh, actually has produced with his injured seasons, keeping that in mind, had this guy not been injured, he'd have been staring or he would have been holding at or staring every single record book in the face. He would have owned the home runs. He would buy, by a large margin. He wouldn't have had Barry Bonds. Um, I mean, games played everything. So I, I honestly think that a hundred percent, he should, he should be in, uh, without question. I agree with every point that John just made. I want to say 95% of the vote. I'm thinking we're going to get to the point where we'll get like 96 or 97, but there will be someone who wants to be a smart ass and say, hey, you know. And, and just for your edification, the reason that they cut the, the voters from 600 to 450 is because they eliminated writers we not been active in the game for more than 10 years. Uh, previously, they allowed people, uh, they included people who have been active members for 10 consecutive years at any point. So, Yeah, it was one of those situations where you had a lot of old writers that were complaining right. about, well, these, these steroid-ridden athletes ruined my credibility, so I'm going to ruin their credibility, and I'm not going to vote them into the Hall of Fame. Where the newer guys are are more open to saying, look at, we know, we know the steroid era in baseball happened. We're not going to 
deny it, we're going to have to embrace it and educate the fans. We're not just going to say, oh, Roger Clemens and Barry Bonds were suspected of steroid use, so excuse me, they're not going to go to the Hall of Fame. Well, if that's the case, right, absolutely. Everybody, everybody from this era could be tied to steroids because – you don't know with with the with the technology with the with the, the different types of drugs we've seen it even players come out that don't look like they're on steroids that are on steroids or something else. You don't know. You can't Brian tell. Brian Braun. Drug, yeah, and unless you file a drug test, you don't know. Right. So you have mm-hmm. to give everybody the benefit of the doubt and say, look at they played in the steroid era. It's like when they played in the dead ball era or the live ball era. You say, yeah, this guy had a one six eight ERA for his career, but he pitched in the dead ball era. Yeah. I don't disagree with I don't disagree with any of that. And it's kind of sad when you when you think of, you know, an entire generation of of baseball talent uh, from Clemens on through Bonds, uh, Barry Bonds. And in most cases, Barry Bonds and Roger Clemens were Hall of Famers prior to their use. So even if they wanted to go ahead and disqualify all of the rest of the home runs that Barry Bonds has hit his numbers prior to his his swelling of the head and and, you know, everywhere else. Um, qualified him for a Hall of Fame, uh, yeah. for, for for the Hall of Fame without like any, a lot of like a lot of people so, said, so. A lot of people said Barry Bonds' downfall was his ego. Absolutely, he left. He left Pittsburgh. Was a Hall of Famer when he left Pittsburgh. Goes to San Francisco, sees McGuire in in Sosa getting so popular by hitting home runs, and he wants to do that plus one, and he did. Now, John, I don't want to. I don't want to take your time up by talking too much baseball. I want to talk some football, and because I have you talking here, talking baseball, I'm going to rush. Sorry. I'm gonna, I'm, it's okay. You can do that. We're allowed to do that on here. It's a podcast. Do whatever you want. I want to rush through these these pickums from last week and get to this week because there is a game I want to talk to you about. Uh, phone, from last so, week or this week? No, this week coming up. So that's why I want to rush through last okay. week. Last week, real quick, uh, Lewis went. I sucked. Three. I went eight and five. John went seven and six. To wrap it up, uh, Lewis is 85-47. I'm 83-49. and 49. John brings up the towel at 74-56. and 56. Now, Thursday night football, gentlemen. The Buffalo Bills take on the New what game, York oh, wait, what ga- Jets. What game is happening that game? I, I, what game is happening that day? I'm sorry. I, I, didn't, I didn't know there was football happening that day. Thursday night football? Oh, yeah. You know, didn't know. What game? What game was it? It's the Bills and the Jets. That's sarcasm, bro. I know that's why I was responding. With... <laughs> I was responding Go ahead, Ryan. So I'm sorry. I went ten and three last week. You went ten and three, Lewis. Yes, that's oh, correct. Lewis, you and I have the Buffalo Bills. John, you have the New York Jets, and John, you also have the floor. Convince us why you picked the Jets. Or I picked the why, Jets. Convince I... us. Sorry, sorry. Convince us why we should believe your picking of the Jets. Well, I don't. I don't give a rat's ass if you believe my picking of the Jets or not. To be honest with you, but I'm gonna. But I'll. But I'll tell you. I'll tell you exactly why I picked them. And if you want to hop on board, cool. If not, cool. Um, first and foremost, the Jets and the Bills very much are banged up. They are going to need the mini buy after this game is over with. But when you take a look at the Jets, their entire team from top to bottom, completely different than the team that got routed twice by Buffalo last year. And while Chris Ivory may be banged up, he does have a, a, a good support system around him offensively. Ryan Fitzpatrick, while while he does have that uh, torn ligament in his thumb or whatever the hell he has, um, and his non-throwing hand, has never had the weapons that he has now on offense with Decker and with Marshall and 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 Curley and and whoever. So he he's never had a system like that. So I don't think it's going to boil down to whether or not the Jets, who average twenty five to thirty points a game, um, will be able to score on Buffalo's very meager defense at this point. Um, it, it's not vaunted like Rex Ryan wants it, wants it to be. It's just it's not that that's not the defense. It's not the game that they play. The Buffalo Bills are a very high-powered offense who also average 25 to 30, 35 points a game. And it's really going to boil down to the Bills' offense and can they keep Tyrod Taylor at bay because he's the difference maker. It's going to boil down to Tyrod Taylor's play. And the Jets' defense, while they are banged up right now with Calvin Pryor being out and Antonio Cromartie is doubtful at this point right now. They just reactivated Dean Milliner. Nobody's scared of him. 
but they still have Darrell Rivas, who's a big difference maker. He's going to be on Watkins and the, the bills, you know, Shady McCoy is hurt his shoulder. He may play, but it might be more of a running back by committee that week with Carlos Williams, pick him up in fantasy if you don't have him. but it's going to boil down to the bills offense versus the jets defense. Now the bills offense, while they are, when they're firing on all cylinders, they're very, very tough to beat. They are still very young. A lot of those players have not had the Rex Ryan like spotlight on them. They've not had the eyes of the nation watching them on Thursday night. They had it in London. They had London, you know, England watching them and nobody really cared. Nobody cares about football in London. I'm sorry, but they've never you had. Be wrong, you might be wrong about that one. Yeah, maybe, maybe not. I don't know, but it's, it's, growing, I, it's that's growing not time. here nor that, that's, that's neither fair. here nor there right now. But they've never had the national spotlight on them in a very big marquee game with multiple storylines on them. Not not these current bills. Tyrod Taylor has never been in a spotlight like this, and you can't count, you can't include when New England came to town in Week Two. You cannot include that because that was a one o'clock game. They got completely routed, and yes, he had a better second half. But at that point, I mean, the Patriots were mailing it in. They could have easily had the game. They could have easily put up fifty if they wanted. They didn't. But this is a big storyline with Rex Ryan just being fired, coming back into town, making I.K. and Impali the captain, doing all his Rex Ryan shenanigans that he does. I don't know how the Bills' young core group of people are going to handle that spotlight being put on them. Darrell Rivas has been there before. Uh, Antonio Cromartie has been there before. Sheldon Richardson, he's play, he plays in the New York market. So, I mean, really, if you're playing in the New York metro area, you're always got the spotlight on you. I don't know how the Bills offense is going to handle that, being a night game in New York, in the Meadowlands, or New Jersey, in the Meadowlands, where it is very difficult to play no matter who's the home team there. I, it's going to boil down to the, the Bills offense against the Jets defense. Both teams, I think, will score. It will be very close. I've got the Jets on it because of the because of the experience edge, and quite honestly, I think their the Jets offense is better than the Bills defense. I'm I'm not sure about that one. I mean, I, I can see I can see getting wrapped up in, in it being Rex's homecoming, in uh, having a point to prove. I mean, we we've all learned that it even if the defense doesn't turn around for the Bills. Even if the defense does turn around for the Bills this season, there's probably going to be some wholesale changes in the in the offseason because it's clear that the way the Bills' defense is currently being used is not effective for the style of players that they have mm-hmm. and the style of uh, play that those players like, the, or the style of football those players like to play. Because uh, obviously mm-hmm. we saw what Jim Schwartz did with them and what Mike Pettin did with them, and then Rex Ryan brings in his own guy, and now look at what they're doing. Uh, so I, I'm assuming that at some point in time we will see some sort of change, probably in the off season, so we're ways away from that. But uh, that off that defense can be a whole lot better. Now I know the offense is is like you said, a little banged up. Um, Sammy Watkins on Darrell Rios, I'm not too worried about it. Uh, a little worried about Lashawn McCoy, but then again, Carlos Williams is a, is a wrecking ball. Um, Tyrod Taylor yeah. has been is he makes when he's when he's in and healthy, he makes smart plays, smart decision maker. Um, he usually doesn't put the ball. I don't, I don't know. I mean, did you watch the game with him and with uh, the Bills and the Titans? He, uh, that's why do I said. I, do I have to remind usually, everybody about the first half? He's usually smart with the football. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. Okay. I, I don't necessarily think that it's going to be lopsided because that just doesn't feel right, especially coming off of. A couple days. I mean, it's only been four days since the last they both played last. So you know, Thursday night football games are usually a little crazier, but um, it'll mm-hmm. be entertaining. It'll be entertaining for sure. But I'm I'm interested in in asking you about the Jets quarterback situation because we saw during the week or last after last Sunday's game, uh, Ryan Fitzpatrick did did clue the, the media into saying he's probably going to get his thumb fixed in their extended break. Now, are you worried about that? Because it's not expected to take him out for the year. It's not even expected to take him mm-hmm. out for the next week. He just wants to get it fixed up now. Uh, clearly, it's causing him enough trouble that he wants to get it taken care of. But if that does become an issue for him, 
How worried are you that the Jets' season can go belly up just because of Ryan Fitzpatrick? I'm not that worried about it, to be honest with you, because, again, the cast of characters that are around him could make could, could hold their own. Now, Geno Smith needs, if he's inserted in there, and, and let's just say that that's probably what's going to happen because the Jets have a strategic plan with Bryce Petty. They, unlike, you know, Jacksonville with Blake Bortles, you know, are, are going to actually sit Petty out and, and not use him because they want him to learn. They want him to absorb everything. And then they want to, you know, once it's his time, it's his time. They want to do it the right way then slow build him. So uh, we're going to assume uh, Geno Smith steps in in relief. It, Geno Smith needs to realize he has not played very much this season. So he's going to be very rusty. He is going to need to rely on the legs of Chris Ivory, on the route running of Eric Decker, on the hands of Brandon Marshall, and not so much try to do it so many, you know, Geno Smith boneheaded plays, thinking that he's the only playmaker on the team because we all know what happens when that, unless you're playing the Miami Dolphins in which you pitch a perfect game and throw and throw a 158.3 quarterback rating uh, like you did in week 16 last year or week 17 last year, you're not playing the Miami Dolphins every week. So Geno Smith needs to manage the game. He would need to manage the football game. And I don't know that that's a skill that he has or if it's a skill he wants to have. If he can swallow his pride and manage the football game for however long he would be in the game, in the contest, um, until Fitzpatrick comes back, I think they have a, they would have an okay shot at, at staying at the pace that they are. I mean, you got to look at their opponents after Buffalo and I'm pulling that up right now. So bear with me just a quick second here. Um, okay. They have, all right. So they have Buffalo, but then after that, they have Houston at Houston, which Houston is a product of their, their division. They are in the worst division of football, the AFC South. Then they've got Miami. Nobody's really pissing their pants over Miami anymore. Um, they'll have the New York giants. By that point, I would think that if, if it goes that long, if Fitzpatrick would be out, then we're, there there might be cause for concern, but I wouldn't give the cause for concern until uh, until week 13 with the Giants, week 16 with New England, and then week 17 again with Buffalo. I, I'm going to say that they're going to beat Houston, beat Miami, beat Tennessee. Uh, Dallas, uh, it, that's going to depend on Tony Romo being back. I know he's supposed to be back in week 11, but if he's back week 15, how is he playing? Um, what will the Cowboys be playing for at that point? Uh, if they're if they lose another game, they're virtually out of it. Sorry, Lewis, but it's um, cool. I don't think it's going to be. I, I don't think it's going to hinder the Jets as long as Geno Smith knows his role, listens to Coach Bowles, and manages the game like he should. Now, the last question I have for you, John, because this has kind of turned into an impromptu interview, which has been pretty cool. Uh, I like it. How surprised are you? I'm trying to get the number. I thought I had enough time to get the stat popped up, but apparently I'm slow. Um, how surprised are you Yo, at man. the... Oh, Lewis, what were you going to say? So We all know that. I, mean, I try to do... The thing is I try to prep for the podcast as much as possible, but usually when we get on here and start talking, my mind starts to spurt off different ideas, so I, I want to try to touch on as many as I can before we, we lose John. No, no, I was just agreeing with the fact that you're slow. Last... Oh, thank you. <laughs> Uh, last season, I picked up what you were putting season, down, Lou. I last, season did. Six, last season in 16 games, six starts, Chris Johnson had 663 rushing yards, uh, 155 attempts this season in six, eight games, six starts, 676 yards, 141 rushing attempts. Are you surprised by the, the resurgence that, uh, that Chris Johnson has had this season with the Arizona Cardinals? I am and I'm not. I am because of the incident that happened in the off season with uh, the, I think it was the drive-by. Was he a victim of a drive-by or something like that? I believe so. Um, a, gu- a gun was involved, a bullet was involved, and his leg was involved. So, um, so the fact that he is having this type of a season after going through what he went through in the off season is remarkable in and of itself. Even if he had last year's Jets numbers at this point, coming back from what he came back from is remarkable. So from that aspect, I'm surprised from the other aspect of you got to look at the division he's playing in. 
nobody's really going crazy over uh, over San Francisco right now. Okay. Uh, St. Louis is kind of an anomaly. They're really weird. Like they can beat the good teams and then they lose to bad teams, um, but they still suck somewhat. You know, it's it's really weird. So it's really weird with St. Louis. And then you look at Seattle. It's Seattle Seahawks. <laughs> Enough said. They got a song. They got a song from God. They got a song named after them. You know, an impromptu song. They are not the Seattle Seahawks that uh, they've been known to be for the past few years. So it's it's not. It's it's more a product, very much. I don't want to say on on the the super suck scale of the AFC South because every team there is absolutely awful, but it's on that kind of horizon there where it's more a product of the division that they're playing in, and then you take and then you factor in too the system that Bruce Arians is running is a very very. I was just about to ask that. Carson Palmer is is having himself a year, so. It's not all on Chris Johnson to make these plays and try and get 2,000 yards because now he's got receivers and in, in Michael Floyd and, and Larry Fitzgerald and John, what's his face? I can't remember. His name always escapes me. But um, John, John you know, Brown. they're making – John Brown, that's it. Thank you. And they're, and they're making plays and they're scoring touchdowns. And, and so defenses are preparing for them, which is leaving the opening for Chris Johnson to just kind of you know, do his thing, do what he needs to do. So, yes, to a degree, I'm surprised by his his uh, production, but no, I'm not because Arizona, all around, top to bottom, is a very good team. Hey guys, do you want to do you want to laugh? Since I have you on the air, and you're both Yankees fans. I just read something that came across the wire. Do you guys want to laugh at me really hard? John Farrell, sure. John Farrell, the Boston Red Sox manager, uh, who is in remission from cancer. He'll be back next season to coach the Red Sox. He was on the radio just a little while ago, and he says that Hanley Ramirez is going to need to play uh, roughly 140-plus games at first base. They're looking for doubles and at least 20 home runs. You can start laughing at me now and uh, not stop laughing until roughly October of next year because I'm probably going to need it. I apologize, Ryan. And a stiff drink, possibly, if uh, if if you could. Well, well, Perez is the man that could hook you up with a good selection of stiff drinks. There, can't you? Oh yes, I have a very extensive alcoholic alcohol collection. It's only it is only November, so things can change. But obviously, Hanley Ramirez being your team's first uh, baseman is is probably not ideal for sure. Now, start, real quick, start John, getting that belly start getting that belly warm now with that alcohol, man. I'm gonna I'm gonna have to, man. <laughs> Starting with the other with the other two games we picked this week, um, Lewis and John, you have Oakland. I have Minnesota. I'm just buying what the Vikings are selling. I mean, I, I'm a big fan of what they're doing. I know Oakland has been phenomenal, but I just think Minnesota with their defense and with how Teddy Bridgewater has been very smart with the football. Looks like he's going to play this yeah. week. This concussion test. I I am a fan of the Minnesota Vikings. Minnesota and, has, and Minnesota has had a t- and Peterson Minnesota Silicon. has had a. Minnesota has had a bad has had an easy schedule. They've been who I mean let's let's bring let's bring up their schedule. Who have they played? They played Detroit. Detroit sucks. San Diego. They, they, they you know, San Diego. They're bad. They lost to Denver, um, which at the time Denver was unbeaten. They beat Kansas City. Nobody's afraid of them. They beat Detroit again. Who hasn't? They beat Chicago. Who hasn't? They beat St. Louis, aforementioned anomaly. I mean. You know they they they're they're they are a product of the schedule of the teams that they're playing right now. You look at what they're what they're facing. They've got Oakland, who's who who's you know, I mean they, they're Doctor, pretty good. They're, they're Doctor got, Jekyll, Mister Hyde, really, because you know there's there's exactly. games that they, there's games they should have won, there's games they should have lost, and usually they right. they lose. They win the ones they win the games they're supposed to lose. They lose the games they're supposed to win. Mm-hmm. They've got Green Bay twice. Which I'm sorry that they're not going to beat Green Bay in Lambeau, especially. Um, and they've got Atlanta, who might be on a little bit of a free fall right now, but they're still good enough to beat the Minnesota Vikings. Arizona, they have Chicago, and 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 I know that they beat Chicago at Week Eight, twenty-three twenty. But Smoke and Jay, he's 
he's he's been the fourth quarter kid and he's he's actually putting himself together a pretty good season they have seattle which you know for all of their funny songs that are coming out they're they're still seattle um they have the new york giants so so here's, they here's had, the they thing had, here's the thing here's hats, the thing hats off have, to them they had a great first i'm sorry go on sorry they, they have eight games left correct correct if they go four and four in those eight games, they win ten games. They're in the playoffs, right? That, as that's the saying, true. As they, the saying they... goes, as the saying goes, as we all know this, if you're a good team, you're supposed to beat bad teams. So yes, while you say their schedule right. was easy and they're they're piling up on bad teams, that's what good football teams are supposed to do. Right, but then again, when you think about it, they should have won week one. By that theory, they should have won week one at San Francisco, and they didn't. They got routed. Um, so, you know, that was a game that they could, that they could have had. I mean, realistically, do I see them with the eight games left? Do they see them going four and four? No, I could probably see them going three and five. Uh, I don't see them beating green Bay twice. I don't see them beating New York. I don't see them beating Chicago. I don't see them being at Arizona or Seattle. I just don't. And, and well, Atlanta I think, I, could I, be, I, I, I'm a say, I think it's a safe bet right now to say that they'll go at least four and four and make the playoffs. Okay, fair I mean, enough. We can we can revisit you, that. Lewis, what about you? You've been quiet. I've just been listening to y'all talk. I don't want you to fall asleep. You sound like you're getting a little tired over there. No, no. If we're talking about Oakland uh, versus Minnesota. Well, we're talking more about Minnesota now, but yeah. Well, the Minnesota Vikings, I believe that you know, they had a couple of good games. I mean, they're they got a, they got a nice record right now. Um, but while sure Bridgewater is supposed to play on the night, he, he passed the cont- the concussion protocols. Um, he got his bell rung pretty good, and I feel like if they could put their hands on him a couple of times, um. They'll start making him second guess himself. And I think that Oakland has shown excellent spurts of being a tough team and and trending in a positive direction for uh, upcoming seasons. And I think that Oakland is going to just outscore them. Uh, If you look at Oakland, they've been averaging 26.6 and a game, uh, roughly 374 yards a game. Uh, hey, Lou, I'm sorry, man. I gotta, I gotta interrupt you real quick. I actually got to run, uh, so I'll catch on the, I'll catch up on the rest of this conversation when I, uh, okay. when I listen to it. So, uh, thanks okay, for having before, me on. I appreciate before it. you, before you go, no. we'll just give you, we'll give you the, we'll give you the, the proper send off. Ladies and gentlemen, leaving mid conversation, the co-host of Get Ready America, John Cimino, add the JC Money on Twitter. John, thank you for joining us. Enjoy your evening. Thank you for having me. Lou, see you Sunday. Enjoy right, the podcast. Bro, later. See ya. Now, now, Lou, Lewis, I should say. I don't call you. That's John's thing. I'll call you Lewis. The, uh, the question that we were discussing and that we want to know, John says that with, with a tough schedule coming up the second half, Minnesota being 6-2, and two, I say they'll go at least 4-4, four and four, win 10 games, make the playoffs. John says otherwise. Uh, what do you think? Just quick in a nutshell. You don't have to give me an explanation. You can just say yes or no. Just just throw something out there. I say they beat Chicago. Uh, <clears throat> say that they, let's see. Just looking at their, their schedule coming up. They're not going to beat Green Bay, in my opinion. I can't really see them beating Atlanta. Uh, I mean, they might go 4-4 four and, four and squeak in. But as far as the game on Sunday, if I'm looking at just the just the numbers, um, Oakland is statistically having a better season than, than Minnesota, and I think that's going to translate to this game. And, and I think that's why they're going to they're going to win. They're, I don't that's think fair. I don't think this, the Vikings are going to be able to stop them. I think it'll be close, but I think Oakland's going to come out on top. Well, hey, I don't want you to waste too much of your of your uh, of your thought process right there because. The next and last game, you have to explain to us 
why you picked who you picked. John and yeah. I, John and I have Arizona over Seattle. You have Seattle over Arizona. Proceed. <laughs> uh, I feel that, you know, looking at it, I feel like Seattle has not been playing up to their potential. Um, and while the Cardinals are six and two, um, They've, they've. I, f- I feel like, I feel like they're a, a team that's not as good as advertised, and I feel that Seattle is better than advertised. So I think they're going to shock the world on, and beat them. That's that's my reasoning. I think they're going to shock the world. That's fair. That's all I need to know. I don't. You know, it's, it's one of those things where. Or yeah, you know, you can sit there and, and, and talk whatever you want, but if you just give me your feels, just give me the feels. Give me your opinion, and whatever your opinion, you could say, I think Carson Palmer's going to crap his pants, and I don't know. I'll be like, okay, that's how you feel. It's a very real possibility that I'm going to get that game wrong on Sunday. It's okay. But, uh... I love to hear your reasoning because the reasoning is always what gets me. You know, if, if you're like, like you're saying, I don't think the Cardinals are for real enough. And then next week, if the Cardinals win, I can say, okay, now how do you feel about the Cardinals? That's why we do this. We don't just do this just to sit around and shoot the crap and, and say, you know, shoot the breeze and say, I think the Bills are going to be the Jets. We give a reason why, and then we go back on it and say, okay, that was a pretty good storyline that you, you made it, you made it up yourself. You know, I, you don't, like you said, you don't think the Cardinals are for real. So when the, if the Cardinals beat the Seahawks, We'll get to that. So that's that's why we do this. This is, it's always I think a lot of fun. For real. I just think Minnesota has not not Minnesota. I'm sorry. I, I don't think that Seattle has played up to their potential. Oh so, no, they have not at all. Not at all. You know, I think there's going to be a game where they they face uh, on paper a superior opponent, and they're going to step up to the plate and and, and actually you know show why they've been to. You know, Super Bowl the last two seasons. Um, why they won a Super Bowl, uh, and why they hung tough against the Patriots. I think they'll be able to come back a little bit and show, you know, that they're not dead quite yet. All right, so now we're gonna we're gonna kind of do things ass backwards. Usually we end the podcast after the pick 'em, but there's still football news to talk about, so we're gonna rush through the news really quick. First off. The Detroit Lions fire their president and their general manager. Uh, The head coach sticks around, but I don't think that's going to last for much longer. Uh, He's not very good, uh, not a very good head coach. Um, I just completely blanked on his name, but you know, he was the coach in Indianapolis, and then he sucked in Indy, and they fired him. Uh, What a surprise. Um, I'm going to look that up now because I'm, I'm, I'm really, really angry that I forgot that. But while I looked that up, uh, the Pittsburgh Steelers are going to be without Ben Roethlisberger for a few weeks. He has a mid-foot sprain. Uh, Jim Caldwell, that's what I thought. Jim Caldwell, head coach, he's not very good. Um, I said it. I stand by it. I'm going to look up his career stats really quick, actually, because they are ugly. They are disgusting. Uh, let's get the Wikipedia popped up, because Wikipedia is always the truth, as you may know by now. Okie dokie. He is... 37 and 32 in his head coaching career in the National Football League, 2 and 3 in the postseason. In the NCAA, he was 26 and 63. Hold down to his coaching head coaching record. He was 14. Oh, so yeah. Okay. So since going uh 14 and 2, he's gone 10 and 6, 2 and 14, 11 and 5, 1 and 7 this season, which will probably get him fired. He's 12 and 12 as a Lions head coach. A lot of change there, like I said, but we'll see how that one works out. The Lions need a, a, a new set of eyes in that franchise because they, they have been kind of teetering on the edge, on the brink of being a very good football team and can't get past that. Uh, Pittsburgh Steelers lose quarterback Ben Roethlisberger with a midfoot sprain. He'll be out a few weeks, a big loss for the Steelers who are, are who kept their way, clawed their way back in the playoff race, and, and now they're going to have to focus on possibly getting to the playoffs without Le'Veon Bell and without Ben Roethlisberger, at least for the time being. So Landry Jones and D'Angelo Williams, a lot of fun there. Um, in Week 9, some stuff happened, Some stuff, a lot of stuff happened. The Buffalo Bills become the first team in National Football League history, first team ever, guys, 
to have two 100-yard rushers and a 150-yard receiver in the same game. Very impressive stuff out of Buffalo. Uh, Denver cornerback Akib Talib suspended one game for an illegal eye gouge. I don't know if you saw that, Lewis, but that was very dirty. Very dirty play by Akib Talib. It was very dirty. Um, The New England Patriots lose running back Deion Lewis. And while you may not think that is such a big deal, it is a very big loss for the New England Patriots. I'm going to try to get his statistic popped up right here. I should have done it before. You know, but um, he had 234 rushing yards, two touchdowns, and then I know he had some receiving going on, but naturally these websites are not very user-friendly on the mobile devices. Okie dokie. He had, oh, that's only going to get me rushing. What a bunch of baloney that is, man. I don't understand that. He's a rusher. He catches the ball, too. He might he might have some rushing touchdowns. He might have some catching touchdowns. Uh, yeah, I, I, I'm going to go to USA Today here and see. He's been a rev- revelation for the Patriots with his elusiveness, with his speed out of the backfield. They've used him a lot, and um, he's going to be missed in that offense for sure. So it's it's not too sure. Not too sure who will replace him or how he'll be replaced. I know we'll probably see a lot more of LeGarrette Blunt in that offense, but that might not even do it. I mean, uh, the Patriots have always been a good team in terms of overcoming adversity and overcoming injuries, so I'm just assuming they'll have a game plan set up fairly soon as to how they're going to attack this one. But for now, like I said, huge loss for the New England Patriots. Yes. Yeah, but Blunt, Blunt stepped up very well in his absence last week, and I believe he'll be able to do more of the same. Uh, Deion Lewis stats right here. He had 49 rushing yards for 234, 49 for 234. He had a 4.8 yard per carry. That's pretty good. Not a lot of carries, but that's a very good average to have receiving wise. Uh, 36 receptions for 388 yards, 10.8 yards per catch. So he was averaging uh, about 80, almost 90 yards a game combined catching and receiving. So that's pretty big. Um, but like I said, a torn. A torn ACL. Good find by the Patriots, but uh, a torn ACL for Deion Lewis. Very tough. Very, very tough. Right. And the other thing I want to uh, I want to point out, how much longer until the Indianapolis Colts kill Andrew Luck? Just, just <laughs> a question. Just a question. Well, he's, he's out for the next couple of weeks. So. He's out for two to six weeks with a kidney laceration and a torn abdominal muscle on top of fractured ribs and a partially dislocated shoulder. Now, you would think in the off season that the Colts would make it a priority to protect their franchise quarterback, and they didn't. They didn't. They went outside Andre Johnson, signed Frank Gore. First-round pick was a wide receiver. Um that was a lot of the contention between Ryan Grigson and, and Chuck Pagano, as we discussed earlier in the season, or earlier in the podcast season and earlier in the season alone. And um, but it's it's to the point it's to the point now where, you know, it's like, dude, what the hell are you doing? You have a phenomenal quarterback who you give like a second and a half to throw the ball, and we saw what happened to him against Denver. They destroyed him. They they battered him. They knocked him down as much as they could. They speared him. They 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 crunched him. They they pancaked him. Whatever you want to call it. They beat the ever loving piss out of Andrew Luck. So the fact that he came out of that game with a lacerated kidney and a torn abdomen muscle is not surprising in the slightest because, well, like I said, he he took his ups. And I don't know if I mean we we all know the the owner of the Colts does not take very kindly to his football team not being good. So so do we see Ryan Grigson get fired? Do we see Chuck Pagano get fired? Do we see both get fired? Potentially. Do we see the Colts in the offseason get a new GM? Or maybe they keep the same GM, but they spend a lot of resources, a lot of time, a lot of money on an offensive line. Maybe. Possibly. I could see it happening. Uh, because the Colts this season had expectations to the moon and back. Seriously, right, we yes. a lot of us picked them to win the Super Bowl, yep. and at this point, they may not even come out of the AFC South. I mean, nope. Matt Hasselbeck, Matt Hasselbeck was good in relief when when Andrew Luck was hurt before, uh, 
but can he keep that going? I mean, the 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 next four games that Luck is expected to miss at least, um, they're winnable for Matt Hasselbeck. I, I was I was looking at the schedule. You know, they could probably go three and one in the in a right world. They can go three and one in the next four games. Be I think they're three and five now, so they could be six and six through twelve. Um, they can they can you know they can set themselves up very well for the future. I mean, you don't really have to. You have to just win the division to get into the playoffs, which is stupid. But you know. I mean, at what point in time, like I said, do, do you just say, you know, we have to protect this man, we have to take our, our resources and protect our franchise quarterback because this isn't good. They need to do that in the next coming off season. I mean, he's just getting hammered. And and the one play where he was taken off the field, I mean, he got crunched. He was folded up. Uh, and so they need to do something about that because you, you can't, let your quarterback take those type of lumps because this is what happens. Yeah, it's and it's not good. I mean, because it, this could have been a long term, a long, long term injury. This could have been a career ending injury. You can't take right. chances with that stuff. No. I mean, you 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 put Curtis Painter in for an entire season to get Andrew Luck, so you know you you care a lot about this gentleman and you you want to protect him and take care of him. Um, one last thing before we start to wrap this podcast up. It, it's been a contentious talking point this entire week the st louis rams signed wide receiver wes welker now we know the past history on wes welker he's had a lot of documented concussions he was out of the game because of concussions he hadn't been he hadn't been signed back because of the concussions do you have any problem with him coming back to the the nfl knowing that he has a, a he's very susceptible to concussions now i understand before you answer that question i understand Getting a lot of concussions is not, I mean, getting concussions can make you more susceptible. Not having, a, you know, nothing really makes you more susceptible. Anybody, you know, when someone says, uh, you know, every concussion is different, that's the truth. So one guy is different than the other guy. But Wes Welker is more susceptible to having concussions just because he's had so much head trauma and he's hurt himself so much that a slight hit to the head could be a major concussion or a major issue for him. Uh, so are you worried at all? Wes Welker's uh, return to the National Football League. I am worried. Uh, I don't know if it's a great idea, you know, but he likes to play. Uh, he loves the game. Maybe he he's always he's one of those he's one of those guys too that that plays with his head down, and right. and in in voice contact to his to his head. So I wonder if that'll change. Maybe. But but the one thing I was reading an article and I can't again I just I should take notes during the week and, and leave the stories in my phone so I can sh- send people off to the proper place and give the proper people credit. But I read an article, I think it was um, through injury expert at injury expert on Twitter, I believe where it was like, you know, not worried. He, he said, I'm not worried about the short term effects of Wes Welker playing because obviously he's cleared to play. He's been cleared right. to play. You, you have to assume the team did their due diligence and did a lot of neurological testing or something to make sure he was okay uh, upstairs in his brains, excuse me, in his dome piece in his brain cells. <laughs> Excuse me, but the long-term effects when he's 40, 45, 50, and he's suffered six to 10 concussions or whatever it may be, how will his life be then? And the national football, he doesn't care, he's but that's what I, that's, he's, he's that's, right now. He's well, that's what sport. I care about. That's what I care about. Like when he stops playing football for good, how fast will his brain start to deteriorate? How fast will his quality of life start to deteriorate? That's what I'm interested in finding out. Like I, I hope that his life will not be altered greatly because he decided to come back and play a few more games for the St. Louis Rams. Well, he's a grown man. Absolutely, absolutely. That's what he wants to do. I'm not going to second guess him. Oh, for sure. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't think he should do it myself. But at the same token, you know, I don't think it's love great. the game want to be out there. Absolutely. Now uh, we'll keep an eye on that, but. This has been a great podcast, I, I have to say. Uh, we've had a lot of fun, a lot of good talks. John joined us. So, uh, well, first off, I just want to start. We'll just we'll end the podcast here, but I want to by okay. saying by saying thank you, thank you, Lewis, for joining me tonight. Thank you, Ryan. Yeah, no problem. It looks like Wednesdays become our, des- our designated night for at least the next couple of weeks. I'm not sure. Like I said, once my schedule changes, I'll know probably around December when we can. We can. I'm shooting to have Wednesdays off. So if I have Wednesdays off, we can podcast on Wednesdays, no problem. Um, 
But like I said, I'll keep you posted on that. I want to say thank you to John and Dawn of Get Ready America, the executive uh, producers of this podcast, uh, for always having us on the Gear Network, and John for posting the podcast every weekend. John for joining us this week. Finally, we got him to join the podcast. Um, like I said, he had been recording his podcast, Fantasy Football Podcast with Brandon. Check that out. Check out Get Ready America all on your network. Um, download the Spreaker app if you can on Android for, for faster delivery of BLTD uh, on your phone or your tablet. I'm not sure if an Android tablet, how it works. I can I can check it out and let you all know. But uh, I know with a cell phone, once this goes up, I'll get a notification. And I'll probably take a picture and tweet it out or something so people can see what it looks like. Um but well, besides that, Windows also has a speaker app. Yeah, but I'm not sure how well it how well it works. It works okay. It works fine. Okay, okay. I do want to say one thing we failed to mention. I believe we we, we missed out on it when uh, when we were talking about the Hall of Fame and jumping around a little. Um, condolences go out to the family of ex Atlanta Brave pitcher Tommy uh, Tommy Hansen, who passed away at age 29. Uh, it's suspected he may have suffered an overdose, but that's just preliminary. Uh, on his on his uh, death certificate, it is listed as an overdose, waiting for the toxicology report to return. But apparently, he walked into a hospital. Yeah, he walked into a hospital on uh, I believe it was Sunday, with uh, with with breathing trouble, and he had catastrophic organ failure shortly thereafter, and that was. Uh, Apparently, what led to his demise, but uh, unfortunately, baseball loses another one. And uh, like I said, condolences go out to his family. He was a he was a, a very good up and coming pitcher until he was derailed by a concussion by some shoulder problems. And um, like I said, baseball is you know is going to miss him. That's too bad. Now, as usual. I want to say before we leave, thank you to each and every single one of you for tuning in each and every single week. This is episode 67 of the Better Live Than Dead podcast. We're, we're, we're alive. We're kicking. We're having a great time. Um, I keep saying it. You know, times have been tough with with work, with my new job, and with Lewis being busy. So we're, we're going to try to get more in as we go. I keep The more I keep saying it, the more it makes me want to do it uh, in terms of getting guests, guest spots, uh, doing interviews, stuff like that. We gotta try to talk to our buddy Paul from Between the Buried and Me because you know his his Panthers are eight zero right now, yes, and uh, that would be a great conversation to have at this point in time. So maybe I'll get him on. I'll, I'll shoot him a, a DM on Twitter, and maybe I can get him on b- before uh, or a little after Thanksgiving, so we can talk some football, talk some Hornets basketball as well. But um, I guess with that being said, Lewis, it's time to tell the people we are better live than dead or not. We'll be back next week, next Wednesday night, most likely. Same time, same place. The Gear Radio Network. Also, before we go, I am at WolfBLTD. Lewis is at MRLG Perez. We are at BLTD Sports on Twitter. Check out the website, BLTDSports.com, Facebook.com, backslash BLTD Podcast. I want to say thank you, everyone, for tuning in. Have a great day. Have a great afternoon. Have a great night. Whenever you listen to the podcast, have a great whatever. We'll see you same time, same place next week here exclusively on the Gear Network.